Greetings Church, great to be with you again, Pastor John here, and I trust that you are ready to be discipled by the Word of God. Have you got your Word with you? The living sword that uh, transforms and, and changes our lives. If you have, great. If you haven't, don't you want to pause this recording and go and get it. Let's have a look at what God has to say to us today. Now, won't you turn to 2 Chronicles 16, and we'll be reading from verse 9 today. 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9. If you want to turn there now, don't you just want to pause this recording? Because I'm going to go into some prayer now. Shall we just pray? Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can, we can know your will. As we, as we break bread with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. And we do pray that as we, as we consider the hindrances to hearing your voice, Lord, that you will reveal to us through your Spirit where it is we need to change and what it is we need to change, if there be anything. If they're not, Father, may you reveal that to us too, that we can accept everything that you have in store for us. So, Father, may you use your word as only you can. In Jesus' name, Amen. Right, 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9 from the New King James Version. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. The Lord bless the reading of his word. See, church, the people in Bible times understood the heart to be the seat of the emotions or affections. Secondly, the motives. And thirdly, the intentions of the person. God is really concerned with these things. See, we, the first hindrances that we have to hearing God's word is, is that our hearts are not perfect before God. And we have worldly affections. If our affections are set on things of the earth rather than things in heaven, this offends God. You can find it in 1 John 2.15. The Bible tells us to love God with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. In Matthew 22 and verse 37. Then also... Some hindrances to hearing God is impure motives. If our motives or our motivations are impure, like the prophet Balaam in Numbers 23, then God will severely judge us. You see, Balaam, Balaam bartered God-given miraculous gifts for money, for fame, for prestige. Then thirdly, wrong intentions. And Ananias and Sapphira in Acts 5 were pretending to give all their money to the work of the Lord. But were really keeping back much of it for themselves, weren't they? Because their intent was wrong, God killed them. Oh, church, how we need to guard our affections, our motives and intentions to make sure that they are pure. Isn't it true that, that God knows our heart? Isn't it true that God knows our heart? I'm reminded of 1 Samuel 16 and verse 7. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. You see, we can't hide these things from the Lord. No. And if we do not keep our hearts right in his sight. We will not hear God's voice. We've got to be careful of a hardness of heart. Today, if you want to hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Hebrews 4 verse 7 tells us. We've, we've touched on this before, but I, so I won't go in depth here. But, but unforgiveness stops God's voice. How many people... Uh, just to say, I'm not willing to forgive. Forgiveness brings a return of God's voice. Isn't it just awesome to hear God speak to you? And especially when you, when you bend the knee and say, Lord, I need you to, to soften my heart. I've had this, this hard heart of, of unforgiveness. 
And then, of course, man, when, when our heart is not being transformed, when, we, when we're not saved, when uh, it's like the Spirit Himself breathed, beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God when we are saved. Uh, as Romans 8.16 tells us, there's just this wonderful knowledge of hearing God's voice. And then 1 John 5 verse 10 tells us, He that believeth on the Son of God hath a witness in himself. Have you got that witness today, church? Have you got the joy of, of knowing that you are being born again? Because, church, so often we have this hindrance to hearing the voice of God because we don't know and we never have known the voice of God. You, you today, if you're listening to this message and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you too can be saved. If you're not sure, why don't you ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart right now? Just pray the simple prayer with me, will you? Lord Jesus, I confess you are my Lord. I believe you bore my sins to Calvary's cross to save me from my sin. I believe you rose from the dead and are enthroned at the Father's right hand in heaven. I trust you and your blood alone to be the full payment for my sins. I renounce today and turn from my sins. I receive your Holy Spirit to bear witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. All this I ask in the name of of my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, church. God keep you. And God make His face shine upon you. Amen.